Hey, welcome everyone. Today I want to go over ZTNA as a service, zero trust networking, and how we get it set up on Sophos Central. So what is zero trust? Zero trust is a model and a philosophy in cybersecurity, whereas you trust nothing and verify everything. This is gonna start with the user verification against an identity provider. This is also gonna go into validating the device that they are using is in a good status and standing. Also controlled access and privilege to the resources, both on the cloud environment, local network, and SaaS-based solutions. So how does ZTNA work? What we're going to be covering today is actually going to be the ZTNA as a service offering from Sophos. The standard ZTNA uh, 2.0 service works much the same without the cloud brokering service handling everything. So with Z ZTNA service, the way it's going to work is we are first going to need to establish those ZTNA gateways. This will be hosted in your cloud environment or even in a data center or on premise where those applications or resources that you're needing access to are going to be located. The next step is going to be verifying the end user. We're gonna verify against the identity provider for that end user. We're also gonna verify the status of that device, making sure it's in a good green state before granting access in to that resource and allowing them access to the applications or shares that you have given them inside of the ZTNA gateway. With ZTNA as a service, all of this goes through a cloud broker in Sophos Central. There is no need on the uh, endpoint side, uh, the ZTNA gateway side, to set up anything on the firewall. You do not need to set up any inbound rules for that. Everything is going to connect back to the cloud broker in Sophos Central. The endpoint is going to connect to the cloud broker and it's going to transfer the information through Sophos Central. So what is needed to get started on this journey? First, you're gonna need access to your DNS management tools for your domain. You will need a wildcard certificate, whether that's a purchased wildcard, whether you use Let's Encrypt on there, but you will need a valid wildcard certificate in order to do this. You will need an IDP, and we support today both Azure and Okta with more to follow in the future. You will also need a virtual environment or cloud environment to get started and today we support AWS, VMware, and Hyper-V. If you were doing this deployment uh, without the ZTNA as a service and direct to the gateway itself, you would also need access to your firewall in order to set up those firewall rules. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the Sophos Central console. We'll walk through where ZTNA is, the steps you need to do in order to get it set up, and then we'll go through a quick demo of what the user experience is for ZTNA. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the Sofa Center Partner dashboard. And what I'm gonna do is show you where to go and enable ZTNA for your customers. And it's the exact same place we've done this in the future for any other product on the MSP program. We're gonna come under Manage Customer Usage. You're gonna scroll down and find your account that you want to enable. In this case, I'm gonna be utilizing my MSP CSP demo, and you're gonna select change licenses. You'll notice that you now have a zero trust network access down at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and unselect all of the other products and select next. And it's as simple as going in and checking the box here for that ZTNA. Once you do this, hit next. You'll verify that on the last page, hit save. That customer will now be activated for Zero Trust Networking. From here, let's go ahead and jump into the Sofo Central admin account for that particular customer. For this customer, you'll now notice that they have a new tab over here on the left-hand side for ZTNA. Inside of the ZTNA on your dashboard, at the very top, there's going to be some steps that you'll need to follow in order to get ZTNA set up. Step number one is going to be synchronizing your uh, directory of users into Sophos Central. Uh, if you are going to be using uh, Azure as your identity provider, that's going to be done through your Azure AD sync. Uh, if you just have regular on-prem Active Directory, you can synchronize those users in that way. 
click on the sync users, go in and follow the steps for whichever method meets your needs inside of your environment. The next step is going to be adding an identity provider. For my environment, I already have Azure set up against my Cypher Security US domain, but you can come in and add an identity provider here. It'll show you the two different identity providers that we support today, both Azure and Okta. You will need to give this identity provider a name. You will also need to view the instructions here. These are complete step-by-step -step instructions for going through both Azure and Okta components on there. You'll then provide all of the relevant information to connect up to that service, test the connection, and then hit save. So going back into the dashboard, we've now got your users synced in to Sophos Central. You've got your identity provider set up for verification of uh, the user when they are logging in. The next step is actually gonna be setting up the gateway. With ZTNA as a service, there is actually a step that needs to be done before this. Because we're using ZTNA as a service, and that's what we're going to be going through today, you will need to go into settings and verify your domain if you have not done so already inside of Sophos Central. To do this, come down to settings, and then you'll see an option for domains. This will require access into your DNS management, you're gonna set up your domain. We are gonna give you a text record that is going to be copied uh, into your domain records. And then from there, you'll click on the button to validate that. You'll also see the number of gateways that are currently up behind that particular domain or assigned to that domain. So once you've got this done, again, we can come back into the dashboard and we can see our very next step here is setting up the gateway. To set up the gateway, if you are deploying on VMware or Hyper-V, you'll want to go ahead and download the VM gateway. To do this, simply click on this. It'll bring you into protected devices. Scroll down, find the Zero Trust Network Access, and you'll see the image for both VMware and Hyper-V. This will be different if you are deploying into AWS, uh, as you will put it into a marketplace image there. Okay, so back into our gateway setup. You can see I already currently have one gateway set up on here. When we add a gateway in, we are gonna need to go ahead for ZTNA as a service, select Sophos Cloud as that gateway mode. There still will be an on-premise uh, ZTNA gateway that'll still sit either in your AWS, your VMware, or your Hyper-V environment. So you will need to provide a name for that. You can provide whatever name uh, you see fit in here. Maybe if it's the office name, it's the uh, cloud environments name or the locations, provide a location and a description. And then under the domain, and this is why we needed to validate this, you will need to select a validated domain inside of the gateway. For this one, I'm gonna be utilizing my cyphersecurity.us. The next step is gonna be setting up a fully qualified domain. Now, this is not gonna be uh, a DNS record, uh, a name that you already have set up. You just want to set up a brand new one here. This will be uh, something potentially that people will be accessing from a portal. So maybe it's, you know, ZTNA portal. Uh, in my environment and my other one, it is just called ZTNA.cyphersecurity.us. But if we want to name this portal, we can go in and add that into here. Now, what's going to happen, and the reason why you don't want this to be attached to uh, an A record inside of your DNS is once we are finished and we've got this set up, it is actually going to give you information for a text file that you are going to put into a C name record inside of your DNS. So you're gonna create a brand new C record, in this case for portal.cyphersecurity.us, and it's gonna give you where you need to point that to. That record is then going to redirect and point over to that Sophos Central Cloud Broker. Select your platform type, again, VMware, AWS, Hyper-V. I'm gonna leave mine at VMware. You're gonna select your identity provider, which in my case is my Azure. And then you're gonna come down and select your region. I'm just gonna go ahead and put test in here for my name so we can get past this. Now, the point of presence and the region here, this is not tied to where your Sophos Central admin account is currently located. So we have 
a few different, I believe it's six different regions that we support so far for the ZTNA, select the region that is closest to you. My central account happens to be in US West, US East would be closer to where I'm at. So therefore I would select that US East region inside of here. Uh, if you were overseas, uh, UK, Germany, you can select one of these components here. And if you were over in Asia Pacific, you can select Mumbai or uh, Sydney as your location. Again, pick the one that is closest to you. The next part of the deployment is going to be selecting whether or not it's going to be a one-arm deployment or a two-arm deployment and whether or not you're going to be utilizing gateway clustering. For this environment, we're just going to go with a one-armed environment. If you did select a two-arm environment, it is going to give ask for you know, what the external interface for the, uh, the device would be. Again, I would still recommend it's behind a firewall. This device is not a firewall itself, but if you are uh, deploying this where you know, you've got it behind something else, that's great. And maybe if it has a local network it needs to attach to, and then maybe your application resources are in yet another network or an internal network, you can have that split out between the two resources. For my environment, single one-armed environment, it's going to be put on the inside of my network behind the firewall. I'm going to assign it an IP address inside of my local network, and we'll just select 252. And we'll provide it our gateway address in order to get out to the internet. And we'll give it a DNS server. Okay, this device is now able to get out to the uh, internet on here. Once it is set up, it's got its DNS path on there. The last step you're going to need to do is you're gonna to need to upload your wildcard certificate. So to do this, you're gonna to have to choose, you're gonna find your wildcard certificate and then upload both the PEM file and the private key file for that particular certificate. Okay, so we need to go through, we'll need to pick up our certificate. I'm gonna go and find mine here. Grab that certificate PEM file. And then I also need to grab my private key as well. Once this is done, once this has been uploaded, I can then save and generate the file. Now, there's gonna be two components needed in order to deploy this CTNA gateway into my VMware environment. And before we go on to that, uh, let's talk about this piece here. Again, this is what's gonna pop up whether we're adding a gateway or we're adding a resource. Now this here, if you hover over the I, is gonna let you know that you need to add this as a C name to your DNS records for the qualif fully qualified name that you selected. Uh, so in this case, it was portal, uh, you know, portal.cybersecurity.us. So you will need to go in and copy this alias. You will need to go in and create a C name inside of your DNS and have it point to this record right here. So make sure you've done that. Make sure you don't skip the step on there. you can always come back and find this when we go into the gateway itself, but go ahead and take care of that when you're actually getting this done. The next step is actually going to be deploying this VM gateway. Once you have that VM gateway deployed, you are gonna need again, two components on there. When you boot up that VM gateway, you are gonna to need to download this image here. This image is going to be an ISO file. That ISO file needs to be attached to that VM gateway as it is booting up. It's gonna contain the configuration information for the gateway itself to get it connected to your central admin account. So download this image here, upload the gateway, attach the ISO into that, and then boot that VM gateway. Once that is done, as you see here in my top one, you'll have a gateway that is set up and running and has now been active for nine days. If I was to click into my ZTNA uh, gateway here, again, you can see that alias domain that I need here, that fully qualified domain. So in mine, it's ZTNA.CypherSecurityUS. This is through VMware. It is identity provider of Azure inside of there. And again, the description is my VMware home lab. In here, we can also again see a summary of everything going on. We can see the resources that are currently attached to that. And then you will have the ability, if that certificate ever expires, to go and upload a new certificate inside of it as well. Okay, so we've got the gateway set up. 
So your next step at this point will be going in and creating policies. Essentially, you're going to need potentially two policies, depending on how you want to allow access into your resources. You'll add the policies here. You'll add either an agent based policy or an agentless policy. As you can see, you can have both inside of your environment. The agentless policy is simply going to be uh, going through and setting that up. It's just a policy that we're going to attach to where you're going to verify the user that is attaching to those resources. This is going to be either a portal based option for them getting access into the resource, which you'll see at the end user demo, or they can get direct access into those resources if they know the URL itself. You can see here, I currently have six resources that are currently assigned for agentless under this policy. These have to be web based applications in order to apply them to the agentless policy. For the agent based policy, this is going to mean that we need to have the Sophos ZTNA agent components installed. This is part of the intercept X agent on there. It's just an additional component that you can push out to those devices. What this is going to do is it's going to verify the user against their IDP. It's going to verify the health of that device as long as you are utilizing those conditions, which I'm stating that my device must be in a good green state in order for that user to access it. And then you're going to save that resource. So at this point, we have our policies set up and your last step to this is going to be adding resources for those users to access. Uh, as you can see, I have quite a few different resources set up inside of my environment. Uh, some of those are going to be web applications that are going through the agentless component, but I do also have an SSH access from an agent based perspective, as well as a SIFS share that I can access on a particular device. And again, I will show you all three of these different components here when we get into the end user demo portion. When you add a resource inside of here, you are going to give it a name, uh, whatever this resource may be. You can also go in and select an icon for that. Uh, if you are using a well-known application, you can do a search through Google, find the icon or uh, image for that application that you're wanting to use. Just make sure that it meets the requirements here. So you may need to format that beforehand and that image cannot be over 100 K provide a description. You're going to select your gateway and we're going to use my ZTNA cloud and you're going to select your access method, whether this is going to be an agent based policy or an agentless policy on here. When we select agentless policy, it'll have an option to show this resource inside of the user portal. The user portal is where they can log into. So if you were to go to my ZTNA.cyphersecurity.us, I would see all of the applications that I have access to. If we are on agentless, this is going to lock this into a web based application. You're going to provide that external fully qualified domain. Keep in mind that this needs to be unique. And it will be something that once we hit save on here, it is going to generate that alias on there as well. You are going to need to create another C name to point to this particular application. Give us either the internal fully qualified domain name or the IP address of that resource. Select the port type, again, web based application, so HTTPS or HTTP, and then provide the port for that. If this was agent based, again, you're not going to have that option for showing it inside of the portal. And you will have web based application SSH, RDP, SIF share, or other. With other, you will need to provide, you know, again, you know, TCP, UDP, whatever the case may be, the port that we're going to be accessing. You'll again need to still provide your fully qualified domain. You will still create a C name for that and provide that internal fully qualified domain name or IP address for that resource. For the user groups on here, this will show all of your SOFO central user groups on there. You will want to make sure that you set a user group inside of your identity provider. That is going to be a security group. Uh, this will be corrected in the future. But right now, these are distribution lists. So if you were to select these, they would not actually be able to be used. This is the only one in my environment that is connected to a uh, security group inside of the environment. So I would need to select my ZTNA users and that's going to then grant those users access into this particular resource. Again, when I hit save on that, it is going to prompt me for that alias and whatever I put in here, it's going to generate that based on that name. 
You can see this inside of any of mine here. So if I came in and opened up my Sophos firewall, this is agentless, it's web-based application. I am displaying it inside of the user portal. It's HTTPS on the Sophos firewall port, and there's that alias domain for it. So I could access this resource one of two ways. I could go to the ztna.cyphersecurity.us, get into the portal, and then access the resource through the link there, or I can simply go to firewall.cyphersecurity.us and access that resource directly. Okay, this has just been a quick overview of how to get started, how to set this up inside of Sophos Central. So let's jump into a workstation and see what the user experience looks like for ZTNA. Okay, so let's take a look at what this is gonna look like for the end user. I've got a Sophos Central agent pulled up, and as you can see, my device is in a good green state. There is no malware or potentially unwanted programs. My device also has my zero trust networking access configured, and I am already authenticated in there as my Steve at cyphersecurity.us. They will be prompted the first time that this is enabled and the first time they start accessing a resource inside of the environment, it will authenticate that user. If we click on about, you will see that ZTNA is just another component inside of the Sophos Central agent. Now, accessing resources is seamless for the end user. They don't need to know to come in and connect to this resource, uh, unlike a VPN where they're gonna need to connect, provide their uh, credentials inside of there. This already knows who I am at this point. So if I was to go in and access a resource, and let's go in and first access my file share. So we can come to my computer. We can see I have a file share, which is my share.cyphersecurity.us. It's my Sofo share. I can click into that and have access into that document and to that folder. I can also come in and open up PuTTY inside of the environment. If I want to get access to a Linux server that I have, I can now open this up and I can gain access into that device. And of course I will have to remember my password. Okay. So I'm now in the device and ready to go and connected. And I didn't have to think about anything. I simply connected to uh, that game server URL and it allowed me straight in because I'm already authorized and my device is in a good green state. So what would happen if my device was to go into a bad state? If we went to sophostest.com And we scroll down and we're gonna go ahead and do a call home attack, which is a C2. You're gonna see that I'm gonna get blocked. My device is going to go into a red state. You can see the malware prompt at the bottom there. And if I come back here and I try doing anything on my device, you'll see access to my game server resource is denied due to the device health status. Same thing if I was to come in to my drives. You can see as soon as I start to go in and access that and it's pulls, my file share access is denied due to device health. So what this is going to be, this is going to be the agent status inside of there that is blocking me again due to device health on there. Now you do have another way of accessing this. We can go to the portal. So if I was to go to my ztna.cyphersecurity.us, Now this is agentless access into that device. This is going to require that you sign in to the IDP. And you will need to verify with a code. All right, so we'll enter my one-time password. And I'm now gonna be granted access into the ZTNA portal. 
Now this is agentless access into there. It is following the agentless policy, which does not take into account my device health, which is again, currently in a red state at the moment. This is going to authorize me through the IDP. And then at that point, I have access to all of the different resources inside of here. If I wanted to get remote access into my ESXi lab, I can do that here, Portainer, the you know, Sovos Firewall, Synology, whatever the case may be. I simply click on those. You will see that it'll open up a separate tab. It's gonna to go to my demolab.cyphersecurity.us and it's gonna prompt me to log into my VMware environment. So at this point, I could go ahead and log in and have full access into that environment. Now I could save this URL right here, this demolab.cybersecurity, and then in the future, simply click on that link to skip going to this portal here. Hope this is helpful, showing you exactly how ZTNA uh, works inside of Sophos Central, what's needed to get that set up, and then what the user experience looks like. Hope to see you guys in the next one.